Salut everyone! In this video, I'm gonna show you how to swap DLSS version, DLSS 3 to DLSS 4 in any video game on Linux. Yes, on Linux, dude. And you will see, it's actually pretty easy. I would say even easier than on Windows. Are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. I've been following the development of DXVK-NVAPI for a long time. And lately, since the release of the latest 570 driver from NVIDIA, there is a lot of things moving there. So before we get into the tutorial itself, I want to say a special thanks uh, to all the dev and all the contributors related to this project, because without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we are doing right now and what I'm going to show you in this video. So I, I want to make it clear. The project is awesome. The dev, they have been like super, I would say like kind to help me present you all this information, answer all my, my questions. And I have to say like the number of commits they have been doing for just this specific part have been insane because I've been following them, all their work, all the commits on the, on the GitHub repo and it's pretty huge. So if you have a GitHub account, just go there, put them a star, uh, see if in any way you can help them by, you know, maybe like uh, doing some pull requests, just testing uh, the, the actual like uh, DXVK-NVAPI stuff. Like those guys, they, they deserve a lot of light and I am trying to, you know, share my light to, to their, them. Okay, so... That being said, uh, let's talk about the, the way you could change uh, DLSS uh, 3 to DLSS 4 easily in any game. So the first thing we're going to talk about the requirement. You need the latest driver possible. So as we speak, the driver are, let me show you, they are the 570.124.04. Those drivers are, I believe, in the production branch uh, at NVIDIA, and they are working very good, actually. I've been testing them on my stream last Friday. And those drivers, they have a specific particularity, which is to download the DLSS directly, like, within the driver. So I'm getting a little bit far there, but you're going to understand how it works. And the second requirement related to this tutorial is to run the game through Proton Experimental Bleeding Edge. I'm pretty sure you could run this tutorial with a little bit more trick through uh, the latest like Wine by adding uh, some specific implementation or DXVK, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go that direction because to me, this is just the easiest way. The latest driver, Proton Experimental Bleeding Edge. And even if you are running like through Heroic, I'm also made a tutorial about it. Nowadays, like you have to run Heroic through Uwu, but I would believe that Uwu already supports that, but I'm not at 100% sure on this. I'm pretty sure that if uh, Glorious Egrol watch this video, he's going to be not happy, but uh, it should be running on Uwu. And if it doesn't run on Uwu, you can still switch to Proton Experimental through Heroic Game Launcher. So it's not what you are supposed to do, but it should work, okay? And again, in this video, the focus is going to be really on Steam and to show you how easy it is. So before we move to the command, I want to share with you how it works because I think it's pretty incredible. The first phase is that with those latest drivers and the API, if you put the specific command, the NVIDIA drivers themselves will download the latest DLSS, DLL, and put them in a proton environment configuration like like you know like the prefix folder called pfx related to your actual game and it will just download them so this is pretty awesome because now after downloading them depending on if you activate the command or not you will be able to switch on the fly between dlss3 dlss4 and whatever prefix you want to put there because the driver itself is going to download it. What I noticed while using those command is that sometime the DLL will not upgrade and it's still like a, a problem within the drivers themselves. 
but I noticed like for each new release of the driver, it works better and better. So in a case that the driver itself doesn't download the DLL, where well, you can still do it manually. Okay, so I'm going to cover that after. But I want you to understand really how it works. Like it's done at the driver level, which is just awesome. Now, how do you actually pass the driver setting? And this one is mainly the reason why I waited around like three weeks between sharing this information. As I mentioned earlier, like the devs have been working a lot on how to make it like more, like I would say like digestive, digi di digestible. Like for you to, to, you know, like don't make like extra super complicated like environment like launch commands. We are at a point right now where I think it's pretty fixed and you will see it's pretty easy. Here, we're going to go through it together. You have like all the override for DLSS mod to DLLA. You have all uh, the override for DLSS G multi-frame count. So this will be like for setting up the specific like multi-frame gen count within uh, the NVIDIA uh, driver. Uh, here you can upgrade the DLSS, like frame generation override, so you can force it. Uh, you have also like the opportunity to, to switch the DLSS, like re reconstruction into performance mode. So I'm going to put the link in the description below because we're going to go through a lot of them and you will see like at the end what will be like the basic one to make sure like everything is up to date. But I just want to show you like how deep you can go with those commands. You have also like the re reconstruction like override was going to force the re reconstruction mode on top of the other one. Then you can choose your uh, DLSS re reconstruction preset. And here you're going to find like all the famous presets uh, from NVIDIA. Same with the DLSS SR performance mode. You can push and force uh, DLSS SR override and then all the DLSS SR preset. Okay, so people who are really into DLSS, they know which render does what. But I do believe like right now, if you want to use DLSS 4, you need the DLL and at least like the preset K or J, I don't remember, but I think it's one of those two there to make sure like DLSS 4 is actually enabled like to the latest one with the right preset. Well, you don't have to do anything crazy you just have to put those lines there and it will download. So this line here is to download the latest DLSS. So proton-enable-ngx-updater equal one. And then you need to add like each of the parameter you want to enforce. So here it will be uh, forcing DLSS re reconstruction. Uh, here will be uh, forcing the DLSS like SR. Here will be forcing like the DLSS like frame generation. And then here with those two lines, you will select the render uh, preset. And you can set it to last, last test. I'm going to show you live how it works like that you're going to understand. And to do that, I'm going to do it on Kingdom Come Deliverance. So this game, I believe, run with DLSS free. So I'm going to go into the option here and you will see I have no launch option. So I'm going to add this line here, copy and paste. And then I'm going to add the command here to launch the game itself. I'm going to close and I'm going to launch the game. Okay, so now we are in the game. The dog is barking, but we are in the game. So here is a kick. If you look at the bottom left, you will see that the version of the render preset is K. And if you look at the version of DLSS, it's DLSS v3 version 3.10.2.1. You know at this moment that you are on the latest one and the override did work. So let me show you. If I go on tech power up and I look at the latest version of the driver, I'm on the latest one released less than a month ago. Those are the 3.10.2. And in game and on version 3.10.2. 10.2, exactly the same one. So those are the latest DLSS version with the latest preset, the K version. So I'm running the game by bypassing the one which are delivered by Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. So now I'm going to remove the command and you will see what version we are supposed to use if I don't do the override. So I quit the game, go there, Remove the old command here. 
and restart the game. So here we go. Now I'm back within the game without the DLSS override. And here you will see that I'm on the version 3.7.10 of DLSS, which is, I believe, like the DLSS version like 3. So we are not using the latest version. And if you look at the preset, it's a preset E. So it's a really easy way to override whatever version of DLSS you want. So one important point, you see the little like render preset, a kind of like GUI I have on the bottom left on my screen. This one won't be, and I, and I want to make it clear, this one won't be there by default. You need a special command to make it appear. So let me show you. If you go down the actual wiki here, you will see that as a side note, NGX offer registry setting for enabling graphical indicator for DLSS and DLSSG. Those can be used to validate a snippet or preset. For convenience, those registry setting can be set with a DXVK NVAPI tweak. So this is the command. If you want to get rid of this after noticing that everything is working, you will just push that once as a command and then it will disappear but you still need to launch the game. The important point too is that you need to be in game for uh, this little like uh, snippet GUI to appear uh, on your screen. If you go on the normal like main page of your game, you won't see it. You need to be in game. Another really important related to that is that this command is going to modify the registry of your prefix environment. So when you activate it and deactivate it, it's going to touch directly the, the registry. So make sure that you activate or deactivate it while using the command, because once you activate it once, it's going to stay there in the game no matter what. So be careful about this. I, I was quite surprised that by removing the command, it was still there. Now, let me show you something else. Just in case you want to play another game and this game through the driver, can download the DLSS. How can you copy them from one game to another? I'm going to show exactly how to do it. So we know that for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, the DLL are already downloaded in the specific folder. So I'm going to show exactly where to go and how to find them. So you go on Steam, you right click on the game and you go on manage and do browse local files. Here is going to open a window in the game which is commonly downloaded from steam here you have nothing to touch okay here this is how it should look like what you want to go is in your prefix folder and to find the actual prefix folder what you need to do here is go to the store page of your game and look at the number of the app so if you look at the title here you're going to have app slash and a number and this number is going to be the number related to the prefix so let me show you, you go up here. So this, this is all my game, Steam app. And if I go, I believe in comp data, I'm going to have all the prefix there. And I can tell right away that this is a one starting with 177 here. So it's this one. I go here and now I'm in the prefix folder for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. So I'm going to go in it and I'm going to go to program data, then NVIDIA, NGX, model and here i will have all the model downloaded this is where it does download all the file everything so here what you could do in case something doesn't work correctly you could copy this model folder and paste it in the game which was not able to download it via the nvidia driver command i know it's a little bit confusing but the idea is that when it's set up, you just relaunch the overall like new game you want to play with, with the command I showed you earlier. So don't be worried. The command is a little bit long. You might have to tweak it a little bit depending on your preset and anything, but it's, it's pretty straightforward when you understand the process. So now if you are using Cache OS, because I know a lot of you are using Cache OS, a lot of my viewers, uh, Peter came with a wrapper and a wrapper is really is like a, the command which simplify uh, everything so if you want to use it and running cache os you can just add one of those two commands i'm going to explain what they do the first one is a dlss 
uh, dash swapper. It will do exactly what I showed you earlier. It will download the latest DLSS driver, put it in the correct folder, and launch the game uh, with the latest preset. This one is going to be the same as the previous one, but it won't download nor update the DLL file. And this could be useful in a case where the NVIDIA driver, for example, they are bugged and you have to move the file manually as I just showed you earlier. So how do you use them? Copy this command here, DLSS Swapper. Go to your library, right click, property, put DLSS Swapper there, command, and it's going to do all the job for you. So just to make sure you understand, that's the DLSS Swapper with the script itself. And as you can see, this is exactly the same command than the one in the wiki. But the difference here is like, you just need to put the wrapper command itself to execute all those sub commands. I'm going to launch the game just to show you it's, it's actually working. And boom, here we go. So if you look at the bottom, we have the latest DLSS DLL version 310.2.1 with the NVA app dash override. Okay, so it works. And we have also the latest render preset, the K1. So yeah, as simple as that, guys. So before I move to the conclusion, I just want to add one point. If you are using those override, make sure you are using a game which does not use anti-cheat because there is a high chance that the anti-cheat is going to get you. Okay, it's going to get you because you, you are not supposed to change file. And uh, because it's done automatically, I'm not responsible of you making this mistake. Like you are responsible of making sure that you know uh, what to do with your machine. So again, don't do that if you run a game with anti-cheat. All right, so how do we conclude this one? I have to say I'm pretty happy that on Linux with NVIDIA, I can switch my DLSS version on the fly. And I believe it's actually easier than on Windows. Okay, like I was about to say easier than on Linux. No, no, it's easier than on Windows. So, you know, you set up your command line, you set up the preset, you put it there and you switch DLSS, DLL version on the flow like that. Easy win. So guys, I hope you enjoy this little tutorial. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to subscribe. I need you. Even if we reach finally 15,000 subscribers like last week, it, it's actually awesome. For all the supporters who are like supporting me financially, I want to say a big, big thank you. If you want to join them, you can join them on YouTube for the membership program or on Patreon. Guys, you're the best. Thank you very much for your support and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.